Hi and welcome to this new video and in this video we're going to carry on looking at the left hand side panel here and some of the functionality here and I'm going to start with these buttons here at the top. So let's just get some objects on the screen so I've got something to work with. And we'll focus in. Just scroll out a little bit here, okay like that. Right, so this button here, what it does is it moves the second object that you selected to the first object's location. So I've already got this object here selected. If I hold down control and select that object as well, this is the second object I've selected and it will get moved to the first object's location when I press this button, like so. And that's all it does. Nothing to do with the gate numbers or anything like that, it's just whatever you click second, so in this case I've now clicked this one second, will get moved to the first object's location, like so. So that's what that does. Now where that's useful is uh, if you're doing something like if you're building out a bando section. Uh, so let's go to bando here for a moment. So if you're working with the abandoned stuff and you put that down there and you have put this down here for instance and you now want to line these things up it's quite handy to be able to just move this second object to the first object's location like that and then do a click hold down control so it, it snaps and then you can pull it out and get a perfect line up like that for two objects side by side so it's useful for that kind of thing okay and then this button here this switches between the orthographic and the perspective camera so at the moment if I just put some gates on the field here so let me just go back get some gates so we just put some of these velocity gates down okay so if I get up above these and what I'm going to do is I'm going to position my camera so that I'm directly above this gate here and you can see that because I'm in the perspective camera I'm not directly above this gate and I'm not directly above this gate and you can see I can see more of the side of this gate here due to perspective than I can this one and then this one I can't see the sides of it at all because I'm directly above it now if I was laying out a track and I wanted to do it as if I was looking down on a map then I want the orthographic camera and then you get that by clicking this button here so now you can see that all of these objects look like they're being viewed from directly above. Even if I was to put another one of them all the way out here, for instance, it still looks like I'm directly above it. Whereas if I go back to this camera, you can see that there's loads of perspective on there. On the perspective camera, I can see the side of it. But as soon as I click this button, I no longer can. It becomes orthographic. So that's what that's for. And then while we're up here, we might as well cover the last couple of buttons. So if I get a spline, let's just lay a spline across here, like that, and select it. And we'll put a cone on it, like so. And I just make sure that cone is on there using the square bracket keys, which it is, because so I can move it around. Okay, so this button and this button so you see here spline spacing this is if you were to repeat an object down the spline automatically repeat it this is the spacing 1.5 meters so if I was to click this and then click this button here which is populate the spline with that object you'll see it gets populated across the spline and then this one here is delete everything on the spline so you can delete them all like that so let's put another one back on and just to show what that spline spacing does if I change this to say 0.5 like so and now I click this and hit my duplicate you can see I get lots more of them and I can remove them again with that button so that's what those do and then the last two here that I'm going to cover in this particular video are check and fly these three buttons here and this speed button here these are to do with animation which will be in another video so I'm just going to cover check 
and fly now so if I just get myself back into a position where I can look at one of these gates from the side. So what I'm going to do is I need a start grid so this becomes a valid track so I can actually save this now. So if you click the check button what it does is it checks all of the reset points on these gates and I've got that gate over there as well don't forget so it will check the reset buttons on all these gates and tell me if any of them are invalid or obstructed in some way so you click check it'll ask you to save the track down here so it's TT and then it will check them all and it says no reset issues found and then all of the resets are marked green now if I take this one and bury it below ground like so and then hit check again ask me if I want to overwrite the track, say yes and now it's saying that there's a reset issue on gate 2 and if I click this you can see that is gate 2 and if I lift it up you'll see it's marked red so that's what the check does fly basically changes you to flight mode so you can fly your creation to make sure that it's how you want it and then when you finish flying you hit the F9 key and that will bring you back to the track, ed track editor Okay, so that's everything I wanted to cover in here. Uh, you've also got mouse zoom speed, which uh, actually I'll just cover that quickly. That's how quickly your mouse zooms when you move your mouse wheel. So you can see I'm not moving all that fast at the moment. If I change this to 10, like so, you can see I'm now moving much, much more quickly. And if I change it back to 1, so I'm now moving very slowly when I move my mouse wheel. So that's all that does. Okay, so that's it. And I shall see you on the next video.